Hello, everyone. Welcome to Morning Coffee. Thank you so much for tuning in. So this is going to be a general energy reading for our Wednesday, our hump day, <laughs> October 9th, 2019. So this is a general reading. So please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. Um, oh, gosh, I just lost my train of thought. Um, happy hump day to everybody. I hope you're all having a good week. I am doing, I'm halfway through one week of no nail polish, and I seem to be doing well with it. Um, it's not something that's really bothering me as much or hasn't been bothering me as much as I thought it might, but I'm still looking forward to putting it back. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> Anyway, I hope you guys are having a good week. <clears throat> um, I do have an announcement to make. We are doing happy hour tonight. Yes. Yay, happy hour. So for those of you that don't know, that are new to my channel and don't know, happy hour is a time where I go live on YouTube and I do single question readings live for a discounted price. Normally, a single question reading is $30, but during happy hour, single question readings are $5 off, so we will be doing single question readings for $25 here, live on YouTube, yes? So now that the announcement has been made, um, now that the announcement has been made, the floor is officially open. So if you would like to get in on a single <clears throat> on a single question reading for happy hour, you can go ahead and send payment to paypal.me slash divine conversations, or you can use my email address, um, uh, which is in the description box below uh, on PayPal to find my PayPal account. So like you can go to paypal.com and send payment to Divine Conversations 2711 at gmail.com for a happy hour question. Now, I highly, highly, highly recommend that if you wanna get in on happy hour, you send your payment in as soon as possible, okay? Because I only do 10 readings, all right? There are only 10 spaces available for happy hour and it is first come first serve. So if you would like to, um, if you would like to get in on happy hour, if you would like to be on one of the 10 slots, you can go ahead and send payment. Um, I will post about this in the community tab with a link if, um, you know, a link to where you can make payment on there so that it's a little easier for you guys to see. And I will keep you guys updated um, as to how many spaces are available throughout the day. Um, if spaces do fill up before we even get to happy hour, then I will, get, I will let you guys know and the floor will be closed, okay? But as of right now, the floor is open. Happy hour is going to be happening tonight, uh, Wednesday, October 9th. It's gonna start at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, yes? Um, it's gonna go from about six to eight. Now, in the past, what I did was I did I started with a um, collective reading, and then I went sh and then I went into the uh, s personal readings. However, we're not going to do it that way anymore. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go live on Instagram first and do a nice collective check-in. Um, I'll be live on Instagram, but keep in mind that that collective check-in is only going to be available for 24 hours. Okay, but then. I'll do I'll do the uh, 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 Instagram check-in then for the collective, and then I'll come over here and um, get into happy hour. So I'm probably going to go live on Instagram around 5:30 Eastern Standard Time. So if you're not following me yet on Instagram, go ahead and do that. Uh, you can find me at Divine underscore Conversations, or you can find the link um, in the description box of this video. Yeah. So, yes, I'm super excited about that. It's going to be a lot of fun. I look forward to seeing you guys. Happy hour. Bring your drinks. Smoke them if you got them. You know, grab yourself a glass of wine. Grab yourself a beer, a cocktail, whatnot. I'll probably have a glass of wine. Um, and let's just hang out and have fun. Yeah? Sweet. All right, guys. 
So let's get into the energies for today. Um, it's funny because I was sitting here for a, a few minutes um, shuffling the deck, just looking to see if we had any sort of pre-shuffle energies. And nothing was coming out for a while. And I was literally about, like I was in the middle of shuffling and I was like, all right, well, nothing's coming out. I was literally about to just call it, you know, call it and just be like, whatever, let's just start. No pre-shuffle energies. And then this came out. The Nine of Swords. With none other than the lovers as the overall energy on one side. And on the other side, it's that same old Knight of Wands energy that was coming out yesterday. So, it's interesting because I was, I was feeling into this. And of course, see, upon seeing the lovers, the first thing I thought of was love. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, shit, here we go. Um, and not just love, but like divine, divine partnerships, uh, divine unions, twin flames, all that crap. All right, fine. Um, and so the first message that I was getting here is that there, someone, honestly and truthfully, somebody wants to come forward Somebody's feeling very passionate. Someone may be in an energy of gaining momentum with the Knight of Wands energy, okay? Uh, the Knight of Wands is a messenger, all right? Um, so there is a, you know, it's a very passionate energy. It's very fiery energy. It's very fast moving energy, but it's also an energy that can burn out very easily, very quickly, okay? Now, what I'm feeling here is potentially someone could be in the process of gaining some sort of momentum to move in a direction that is of their heart's desire, the lovers, okay? So this could be in terms of a twin flame romantic partnership, but not whatever somebody, this is most likely the masculine here. If we are talking divine counterparts, if we are talking twin flames. Um, <clears throat> so, if you're the masculine here and, the, and you're watching this, you could be in the process of gaining some sort of momentum to 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 come forward towards an individual that you are you have you that is your divine counterpart. There is anxiety here, though. Okay, um, if it's not that for you, this could be very much a continuation of what we were talking about yesterday about moving in it. Yeah, look, is this the magician? No, it's the chariot. Oh, it's the tower. Oh, goodness gracious. Okay. <laughs> All right. That just caught my attention. I was just trying to move the deck over and I and the tower energy came out. Um, okay, I get it. I'll explain. So if this isn't a, a divine partnership or a divine union or something, or like a romantic a representation of that, then this is an element of divine union within yourself. And this is a continuation of the energies we were talking about yesterday in terms of moving forward in a new direction. Okay. And yet there still is anxiety. Now this anxiety feels, I almost want to say well-placed, but at the same time, I, I, I say that for lack of a better term, um, it feels appropriate. The anxiety feels appropriate given the energy that you have come out of in the past. Um, that being um, following things like societal standards or so societal norms, social norms, familial norms, um, you know, elements of conformity. But this feels like conformity mainly because, you know, this is... It's just how things were developed as the process by which we go about things, you know, for like, so like, for example, um, going to school and getting some sort of college degree, which then in order for you to, I don't know, guarantee, not guarantee anymore, but like assure or, or have some, some greater form of security in terms of getting a job, okay, in the future. But if you're not doing that now, if you're going in a different direction, this is completely 100% following your heart in terms of what kind of career you want to pursue, what kind of business you want to be doing, what, how you want to make your money, whatnot, whatever, and completely going off the beaten path here. But this is off the beaten path, sure, in terms of, how, in terms of societal standards, yes. But 
this is actually very much in alignment with who you truly are, the lovers, okay? And you're gaining this momentum here. Now, in terms of the, the tower that came out, I wanna show this to you because this is in fact relevant, okay? It's this side of the tower. And in this side of the tower, we see a, the lightning striking the tower, a mask being broken. You see that the tower that was built here is in fact hollow, okay? And you see, I don't, you, I don't know if you guys can really see it too much. It might not be bright enough. No, that's not gonna work either. Okay, well down here at the base of the tower is the chariot that these two sphinxes were, were pulling, which is officially the chariot card, okay? Um, and so in terms of this, what this is saying to me is false direction, false drive, maybe even false support support being the chariot that's right that you are riding in that the sphinxes here would be pulling false support in terms of false security like how many of us and i'm one of them right now i'm it's so i'm so whatever i don't want to get into it 11 11 but how many of us have gone into some sort of training or followed some sort of, of some sort of path or trajectory only to find out that your chances of getting that job or getting a position or go or or or, or um, elevating into some new level or whatnot whatever weren't at that aren't that much Isn't that easily fulfilled as you thought it might be? Should you when you before you started this program or whatnot, whatever? Does that are, are we following here? What it feels like a bait and switch situation, but you're starting to realize now you realize that this was a hollow pursuit. Whatever this is for you, this was a hollow pursuit. It wasn't going to get you anything, and so now the chariot has crashed. All right, you're not going in that direction anymore. Um, and it seems here that the Sphinxes are free to roam. And that does kind of make sense. Um, but yet it just feels like their freedom to roam is actually the re, re process, the realignment process, the lover's energy, okay? But there is anxiety. What's underneath the lover's? Ooh, the sun. Okay, the sun is underneath the lovers. Now there is confinement here, all right? Because you see, you have, uh, ooh, and the 10 of pentacles under that. Um, you have this confinement here. This is the sun. But you're the, you have this child and the horse that are normally on the sun card are behind these walls or behind this confinement. And I am seeing that as protection against what you've been in, been through in the past. It's like those are the walls that are keeping you from entering back into the system that you removed yourself from, okay? Now, with this Nine of Swords energy, you are dealing with the uncertainty, the anxiety. This is something new. You're moving in a brand new direction, okay? You're taking on a brand new pursuit, and you don't really have anyone else around you other than the other successful, we'll call them entrepreneurs, um, for, you know, just for... Not to, I mean, I'm going to call you guys entrepreneurs because you are going into business for yourself. doesn't mean you're actually going into business, but you are in the business of following your heart. And that's taking you on an independent path. An entrepreneur is an independent businessman or businesswoman. So I'm going to call you an entrepreneur, even if you're not going into some sort of business field. But I'm hearing many of you are, though. But anyway... You are, you're this anxiety, the, the only people that you have to communicate with about this are the people that have done this sort of thing themselves. But even then, their advice is only going to go so far for you because your, your path is not the same as their path. Their path is not the same as your path. You have different goals that you're wishing to achieve. You have different obstacles that you're needing to overcome. And yet you have this common denominator, we'll call it, in 
going into business for yourself or following your own heart, your own truth, your own wisdom and your own guidance rather than what the masses or society would suggest. You know what I mean? So yes, there is going to be anxiety here. But what I feel like is you are facing this anxiety head on or you're trying to process it somehow. All right, don't just don't allow yourself to get too caught up in um, worst case scenarios. Well, what ifs? Well, what what if this goes wrong? And what if that goes wrong? Don't even focus on that. And you know, this actually this feels like it's a good exercise in maintaining your alignment, maintaining your balance, maintaining your alignment with your inner being, with your higher self. I mean, ask and it is given. The only thing that stands in the way of you receiving that which you've asked for is your own self, i.e. the Nine of Swords, okay? All right, guys. So, with that said, let's get into the rest of this here, yeah? Hmm. Okay, here we go. Hi, spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for our Wednesday, our hump day, <laughs> October 9th, 2019. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, guys, five shuffles. Now, um, the color for the collective right now is still orange. So what this is saying to me is that emotions are still very much on the forefront of um, the forefront of in the in the forefront of our minds. Okay, it's. Um, that's three. We're keeping we're keeping a close eye on our emotions. Uh, that is ideal. For some of you, you can't really deny it um, because of that nine of swords energy. Okay, but staying conscious of your emotions is the perfect way to continue practicing your vibrational awareness. Yes, that's five. All right, guys, so let's see what we what else we have for today. Okay, well, so far, my attention has been drawn to the Ten of Swords and the Justice here. Again, I just feel an energy of, um, I just heard taking a leap of faith, but consciously putting an end to suffering and heartbreak and heartache. Ten of Swords, Justice, okay? I feel, I'm really feeling with these two cards, I'm feeling a, a conscious effort to put an end to suffering, to put an end to heartbreak, to put an end to pain, and just get down to the nitty gritty of you and do what it is that you love to do, okay? And that's a beautiful thing. So for the collective, Wednesday, October 9th, what would you like to discuss with us today, Spirit? What would you like to discuss with us today? For Wednesday, October 9th. My eyes are closed. And, okay, yeah, we have nothing yet. My eyes are closed, so we'll see. Bear with us, guys. Okay, there's more. Wednesday, October 9th. What's going on today, Spirit? What would you like to discuss with us? Wednesday, October 9th. Oh, I hope that didn't fall in my coffee cup. <laughs> Okay, we're going to stop there. Okay, good, good, good. It didn't. All right. Ooh, 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 ooh. Okay, it's interesting because when I got that pre-shuffle, I had this feeling like we were going to be talking about some heavy stuff today. And it looks like that seems to be the case. So we have the f overall energy of the Five of Pentacles with the Queen of Swords. That's better than I thought it was going to be, to be quite honest. Um... We have the Seven of Cups. Wow. Okay. We have the Seven of Cups with the Two of Swords and the Six of Cups, but the Six of Cups is crossing this. 
So, okay. This is what you're facing here. This is what you're dealing with. This is what's right in front of you right now, all right? And it's fairly unsettling. It's fairly unsettling. It's almost a little terrifying, this energy here. Ugh. The beauty. That's right. That's right. I am seeing the beauty in this situation. The beauty here is that you have this Queen of Swords energy. And she's facing forward. So this, in my opinion, this means that she is facing the situation and she's ready and willing to take action. And what is, what is the action that the Queen of Swords takes? None other, none other than cutting out the bullshit, okay? What is that bullshit that you ask? That, or you ask? What is that bullshit that you're facing? Well, it is the Seven of Cups with the Two of Swords. The Seven of Cups being, now the Seven of Cups has been coming out a lot lately, okay? Um, but over the last, like I'll say week and a half, it's been this side of the card. Where we have, okay, so now I'm seeing this as illumination of the Seven Cups here. So whereas in this situation, this individual is in the dark, he's blind, he's found, roamed, made his way into a marsh, and now he's really fucking lost. Doesn't know where the hell he is. So this is the epitome of confusion and not seeing clearly, not being able to see clearly, not being able to make a decision, not being able to make a move with the Two of Swords. And it's all because of what we have learned or what you have learned in the past, the Six of Cups. That has put you or that leaves you in this state of feeling inadequate, not good enough, um, um, not powerful enough, not having enough resources, not having enough of an education, uh, whatnot, whatever. Five of Pentacles energy. However, the Queen of Swords is here to say, uh-uh, we're gonna cut all this shit out and we're gonna cut it out right now, okay? So part of this process that you're going through as you follow this path, yes, Spirit says, this path of least resistance. Now, before I go any further, I do want to mention, Spirit wants me to say that just because it is, quote, the path of least resistance, that doesn't mean there is zero resistance, okay? For many of us, there is still a bit of resistance. It's just the least amount, <laughs> okay? Um, so with that said, you are on this path of least resistance, and yet you're still going to have to cut away some of the weeds. Do this work now, guys. Whatever it is that is coming up that you are facing that is causing a roadblock, that is causing this Nine of Swords energy that came out in the pre-shuffle, do the work that you need to do to clear this away. Because ultimately, this is not going to help you. This Five of Pentacles energy feels very much like, especially since it's the side of the card in which we have the individual that is outside what looks like to be a church, out in the cold. This is literally an energy of being left out in the cold or thrown out in the cold, right? But here, this is you having forgotten how much of a powerful divine creator you are. This is you focusing on the fact that you, we, we have been taught Six of Cups from a very young, early age. We have been taught that we need certain physical qualifications, resources, whatnot, whatever, to do what it is that we want to do. And even the fact that we are limited in what we can do. But that is not the case. That is a mind control tactic. In fact, we are infinitely powerful, godlike beings in walking meat suits. Okay? We are source energy and that in in this body we are 
spiritual beings having a physical existence. Now, in having this physical existence, we have crossed what has been labeled as the veil of forgetfulness, in which <clears throat> we have forgotten the truth of who we truly are. Okay, that's fine. That's part of the game that we decided to come, we agreed to come play. However, now it's time to remember who we are, and that's what we're doing, all right? So you could see this Five of Pentacles energy as um, crossing that veil of, for of forgetfulness. But it seems we're coming back into terms with that. It seems that you have an opportunity right now in this current moment, okay, whenever this is resonating for you, you have the opportunity to see past the veil of forgetfulness, forgetfulness and remember who it is that you are. That's what this feels like right now. This feels like consciously piercing that veil of forgetfulness and slowly but surely reintegrating the parts of yourself that you, you have forgotten that you have access to. Okay. I like that. I like that a lot. So now I want to clarify. Um, and I want to... I like the format that I've been doing with this lately um, of clarifying these energies a little bit more and then getting spirits take on it and then getting the Oracle card. So I want to continue with that today. All right, last shuffle. And then we're just going to clarify these energies a little bit more. What is it that you need to know or you could benefit from knowing about these energies? as you make your way through this process. Let's clarify these energies a little bit more here. Two of Swords, Seven of Cups, Six of Cups. With the overall energy of the Five of Pentacles and the Queen of Swords. That's enough, they say. Okay. Okay. Yep. Overall energy of the Eight of Pentacles. Excellent. So Eight of Pentacles here is the overall energy. This is symbolizing doing the work to weave a new web is basically what I want to say here. This is, this is reweaving your web. All right. This is reworking your web. <laughs> okay. You have the Nine of Cups with the Knight of Swords and the Hanged Man. This feels like a very righteous energy. All right. This feels like a very forceful energy. But the Knight of Swords, or in this deck, the Son of Swords, is the extension of the Queen of Swords energy that is making the cuts. Okay? The Queen of Swords is the deciding factor of whatever it is that is superfluous or irrelevant, doesn't resonate, doesn't serve the highest good, whatnot, whatever, for yourself and even for others. The Knight of Swords is the extension of that Queen of Swords energy that is going forward into battle and making those cuts or defending yourself, okay? The Hanged Man, told you guys, change in perspective, all right? Releasing yourself from that which you've learned in the past that keeps you in this sort of holding pattern, right? That keeps you kind of like dumbed down or, or watered down, diluted, is, is removing or removing you, re, uh, um, um, relieving you of your potency, right? In order f to, to be kept in a box, in essence, okay? So this change in, pers you, are, you are working towards this change in perspective that is bringing you wish fulfillment, Nine of Cups. Okay. Wow, that's a beautiful energy. And, and, and <clears throat> this is going to take diligence. I don't even want to say hard work. I mean, yeah, okay, it could be considered hard work, especially like reprogramming your mind is not the easiest thing to do. Um, but it's more, it requires really, all it really requires is diligence. Okay, keeping up with it doing it over and over and over and over. That's, that's basically what program, I mean, that's how we, we, got, we received the programming early, or earlier in our lives, 
repetition, right? So Eight of Pentacles is referring to that repetition necessary to reprogram your mind. That's all. That's really the only difficult, difficult aspect of this. It's keeping up with it. The discipline of keeping up with the programming, the reprogramming, okay? I like this, guys. This is good. This is very good. There is definitely progress being made here. And I do want to point out with this hanged man energy, um, you may be able to look at this stuff and say that it's superfluous now, but if you weren't in this state, if you hadn't experienced this bondage, this stagnancy, this straight jacket even, because I do see the hanged man as somewhat of a straight jacket energy, right? Um, if you didn't experience this, you wouldn't know what you 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 wouldn't know which what is irrelevant for you and what isn't, right? Experiencing the contrast. This is all part of all part of the game. We agreed to come play. Makes sense. Okay, so now with that said, let's get Spirit's take. What does Spirit want to say about this? Direct guidance or maybe some more clarity from Spirit. Well, let's look at direct guidance from Spirit here. From the angels, our guides, whomever. Whomever wishes to help, yes, to serve the highest good of all, yes. So what do you have to say about this spirit? Oh my God. It's so crazy because it flipped over and I didn't see what it was, but I was like ace of cups and I heard love yourself fully. Ace of Cups. <laughs> Ace of Cups, Page of Pentacles, The Magician and the Hanged Man. Wow, you guys. With the Ten of, wow, with the Ten of Wands at the bottom of the deck here. All right, and so now they're also, they're giving me more here because I just hit the, the, the our initial deck and some things have come out. So we have... Underneath the Five of Pentacles, look, we've got the Eight of Pentacles, we've got the Ten of Swords, we've got Strength, and we've got the Fool. But it's the side of the card where, and Strength where that you're facing the devil and you're needing to not allow the devil to stop you. The Ten of Swords, the Eight of Pentacles, you're putting an end to this heartbreak and this pain. You are reworking your web. I mean, you guys, this is amazing. This is amazing. And for some of you, you are reworking your web here with the Eight of Pentacles. You're doing it with direct guidance from your inner child. That's beautiful. But what, uh, what else Spirit has to say here is Ace of Cups, Page of Pentacles. You are loving yourself fully enough to start something new, to follow your heart to do what it is that you want to do, to create what it is you want to create in this lifetime. And it's showing up as the Page of Pentacles because you have now entered this new level where you can practice these manifestation abil manifesting abilities that we are all gifted with, blessed with. We all have these abilities, okay? No one is better than the other and no one person has more access or more abundance than the other. Everybody is equal. I know that's a hard concept for our conscious minds or our egoic minds to wrap itself around, but that's just something you're just gonna have to have faith in. No one person is any more connected or has any more abundance or, or resources than the other. 
we are we have all come here with equal portions yes you have the magician with the hanged man so manifesting after having a change in perspective manifesting from this new enlightened place seeing things differently seeing things clearer seeing things from a different point of view i mean look at that the hanged man twice beautiful guys with the ten of wands underneath the deck releasing of the burdens and, and this is so this is this this ten of wands is so relieving you guys like it feels so incredibly relieving to let go of that which you really don't want anything to do with anymore and to follow your heart and to do pick up the wands of what it is you truly want and letting go of all the things that you don't. What could be any better than that? Honestly. Okay. For Oracle guidance today, I'm being called to go with the crystal mandala or mandala, mandala. God, I never, I, whatever. <laughs> We're not doing that again. <laughs> okay, here we go, guys. Oracle guidance for today. Two Jazel. Oracle guidance, please, spirit. One last shuffle here. guidance for your Wednesday, your hump day. Yes, here we go. <laughs> Closing guidance, please, spirit. Oracle guidance here. There it is. Yes! Card number 35. Ascended Master Baba G and diamond so it shall be my 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 isn't that just gorgeous gorgeous what is that 35 <laughs> okay so it shall be we bring you the blessing of so it shall be there are times when you will go through your life journey without any sign of what's going to happen. You may be working hard to heal an issue or build your dream, but not really know if you are ever going to be successful. There's that Nine of Swords energy that came out in the pre-shuffle. You may hope for the best, but not know whether you should really expect the worst. You may sense that the universe is asking you to trust in how things are going to turn out, and yet giving up your uncertainty is difficult. I wanna stop right there for a moment um, because I literally, I experienced that moment this morning. I woke up and I found myself back in this mindset that I was in yesterday of like working through and figuring out and, and being in alignment and allowing myself to flow with that alignment and fl flowing with the ideas that were coming to me and you know i'm starting to plan certain things and blah 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 and just start to figure just start to logically work through things and be, be a little practical about it but just giving more structure to what i'm i'm being guided towards right and this morning i had a such i had a moment where i was like oh my god what if this doesn't work what if I put all, I, what if I invest all of this effort into X, Y, and Z and it just doesn't pan out? And I literally had a moment where I was like, Eric, the universe was just like, Eric, we're guiding you in this way. We just need you to trust us. I mean, I mean, you feel in alignment with this, right? I'm like, yeah, are you kidding me? I'm like so excited about this. I'm so happy to just sit here and even like, plan it out contemplate it they're like okay so what <laughs> but guys eric but guys come on what happens if it doesn't work eric <laughs> okay okay so this is this shit's real <laughs> it's real all right 
I'm going to read that last sentence again. You may sense that the universe is asking you to trust in how things are going to turn out, and yet giving up your uncertainty is difficult. That usually means total and uncompromising commitment is difficult too. Where there is uncertainty, there is often hesitation and procrastination. Spirit doesn't want you to miss out on your dreams because you lack faith and therefore are holding yourself back from going for it with all you have within. So you are being given the blessing of divine decree, of absolute confirmation of success and the divine granting of a wish fulfilled. Switch your thinking from possibility to inevitability. It is not a question of if, but when. You know that you are going to succeed and commit yourself completely. Don't hold back. Go for it with gusto. According to divine will, you shall manifest the high, highest expression of your divine destiny this lifetime. So it shall be. I want to read some more of this for you. We're going to go with this. Um, oh, wait, hold on. Oh, I, I want to go with this. At a certain point on the spiritual journey, a soul reaches a level of evolution where it becomes capable of loving and trusting the divine to such an extent that it will not turn away from anything that life asks of it. It serves unconditionally. The will within such a soul has become a diamond will developed through initiation and struggle. It takes lifetimes upon lifetimes, like the slow, steady pressure that creates a natural diamond, for the impact of the world and the tests of spiritual initiation to create an undeniable strength in the soul. That spiritual toughness prevents the soul from yielding to fear or doubt and instead allows it to trust unconditionally in the workings of the divine, even if those workings are not understood. Even if these are things asked of the soul that are different or I'm sorry, difficult or challenging, it will not turn away from unwavering trust and devotion to the divine. And this is definitely what we have been going through. Oh, wow. Okay, let me read this one too. At this stage, the operation of free will has merged with divine will. The state of trust and surrender within the soul to the workings of the divine is so complete that there is only one will, unconditional love, that is at play. The choice the soul makes, I'm sorry, the choices the soul makes are the choices the, uh, the, the, that the divine makes. There is no separation. This is how it becomes possible to know that the truths and desires of your heart are actually in alignment with your highest destiny. What speaks through your heart is the divine. This oracle asks you to act on the truths of your heart with total assurance. It is the urging of the universe you feel within your sacred heart. There shall be divine intervention, protection, assistance, and if needs be, miracles that move heaven and earth. So this divine urging shall come to life in the world. I'm gonna stop there. So there you have it, guys. This is excellent. Please keep going. Yes, I hope you guys have a fantastic day. And I look forward to not only our next cup of coffee tomorrow morning, but a few happy hour cocktails this evening. Yes, don't forget, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And if you would like to get on the list, happy hour readings are discounted from $30 to $25. So, um, and I'll post it in the community tab get on that list as soon as possible. Yes, there are only 10 spaces available. All right, guys, I love you all and I will see you later, yeah? Bye.